Well, here's day three of the 225 DRS build. Um, I guess as you can tell, I put the rear end on. I actually did that yesterday night. Um, it looks like it's leaking oil, but it's not. I just overflowed it. Plus, there should be another uh, puddle under there because... Uh, sorry, I just realized I the tool in there. Because uh, I have my carb that came off of it. I cleaned it, and I knew when I cleaned it that wasn't wasn't letting things flow very well through the uh, fuel intake tube I guess is what you want to call it down into uh, I can't think of what the thing's called but it pushes the float up and turns off the fuel into the carb I knew it was not flowing very well in there <clears throat> and my main worry was that that was going to be too plugged or when fuel went in there it was going to replug the hole and that's exactly what it did do so what I had an old junk carb off a 225DX. I kind of used pieces off my other carb and you can see I threw it on there. And it, it's always acted like the float doesn't go high enough. And that's exactly what I'm assuming did happen because it was all coming out of the overflow. It did run, it did sound pretty decent. Um, but I have a thing at work I guess that can uh, clean that up really, really, really well inside and out. So I'm going to take the original carb off of this and run it in and do that tomorrow. And then hopefully I can put this thing on there and drive it. Um, tonight, since I'm really at a standstill with this thing, I'm not worried about a battery. I'm not worried about brakes until it can drive. Plus I know it needs rear end work, which is why I still have that rear end here. And I'm not going to do rear end work till well, probably this winter because as I said before, I'm going to college soon. That's why I'm in a rush to get this thing finished. Well, not finished, but running and driving basically, which technically I guess is at that point, but it's not good enough for me yet. But since I can't do any type of engine work or anything, I'm gonna do cosmetic work and kind of start cleaning up the uh, plastics, which I mean, they're just really, really dirty. Now, the way I'm gonna do this, a lot of people would say, don't do that, that'll ruin them, that'll scratch them, yada, yada, yada but I've never had a horrible time doing this and the plastics have never come out terrible. But what I do is I like to take uh, steel wool, soapy water, and just really clean all that crap off and then you just hose it off when you're done or wipe it down, do something like that. Um, so tonight that's what I think I'm gonna do is just that on this. My only real worries are is getting water on these old uh, decals or stickers, whatever you wanna call them. I'd call them decals, but some people wouldn't. My main worry is that I'm gonna ruin those or accidentally peel them off, because as you can see, parts of them have kinda of come off already. Um, so I'm gonna do that to these and to the uh, tank shrouds, because um, I think those will be the two easiest things to clean up. I don't really wanna take off the front fender because I don't need to, so I'm not going to. <clears throat> um, I guess the only thing else I'd like to check is while I have it running is do the headlights and taillights work, but really not important for running and driving um, another thing I might get to tonight maybe not I'm not too concerned about that either is I know that the airbox is completely filled with mouse junk because uh, there's a hole in the airbox I noticed uh, a day or two ago so that needs to get fixed sometime um, sadly my parts wheeler did not have an airbox on it I knew that when I bought it though but yeah, um, it's, it's, I would say, a day ahead of where I thought it'd be. Um, my main plan, I guess, tonight originally was get the rear end all pieced together and put on, but luckily I just kind of said not to worry about that. I'll get to it next time. Because originally I was told that that would leak out the oil, but after looking at my floor, it kept a decent amount of oil in it. Um, so like I said, I'm not super worried about that right now. Um, I'm saying um a lot, I feel like, but I just keep thinking about different things. Yeah, and then the other thing I know might slow me up is, I'll just show you on this motor because it's all the way in there, is this is a ton smaller on this motor for some reason. That's just your, uh, let's say, oil breather, I guess. And however, Neither of them had the correct parts for inside there where it should come up to a little box, that little box next to the air box. Um, 
It does have a really long hose, which I might just heat up and put over that hole and then run that, see if it can fit in the airbox. I know that's not the right way of doing it. And I actually have the correct piece of doing it is that little black box from maybe actually from that three wheeler. I don't remember. I know I had to take a hose off of it when I had my 225DX and put that on there. Um, but yeah, basically it's, it's getting there slowly but surely it, it is getting there. So, uh, this video is short and sweet and I still rambled a lot, but I'll keep you guys updated on what happens when I get it happening. Um, like I said, if you follow my Instagram, that's when you'll learn things first and, uh, you'll see pictures of it there probably a week ahead of when I put things up that I'm actually doing things with it and I'll try to put a before and after picture on there because I don't use video editing software so therefore I don't really know how to do all that stuff so you can see a before and after picture I guess on YouTube but yeah um, that's all I can really think of right now I guess I could try telling you what's left to do but that is consist of rambling so that doesn't matter. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe and check me out on Instagram, SPF Motorsports. Thank you.